Well, hi everybody, Tom here. I feel long overdue for a spongy moth update. This is, I don't know, the sixth or seventh edition, but here we are now in March of 2023. Now for some of you in the Western Massachusetts, Columbia County area of New York State and West, and also Litchfield Hills, especially in uh, Northwest corner of Connecticut, this is the third year you will be seeing the spongy moth caterpillars and subsequent moths and egg masses uh, in, in this particular outbreak. Now, just a little bit of review here. This insect has been around um, since uh, 100 and, 150, 160 years plus. Uh, it's an Asian native brought here by uh, a fella who thought he would take advantage of the of the silk that's exuded by the caterpillars. Uh, you could see where he thought he might go with this. It did not work out. In fact, the caterpillars escaped from his garage. Eastern Massachusetts, as a matter of fact. Again, 1869. So we've been dealing with this ever since. Uh, one of the measures that was employed was to import a fungus called Entomophaga mymiga. Mymiga is the word the Japanese use for the spongy moth. And remember, spongy moth was referred to by the G word prior. So this is a new name for an insect and a caterpillar that's been around here for quite a while, by our terms, generations. That said, it is not native to the United States and the northeastern United States. So there are no uh, natural predators, if you will, and therefore no shared evolutionary history uh, by the same token with <clears throat> birds and bees and wasps and other potential predators. We do see some predation. And as a matter of fact, on these egg masses here, there are some signs that uh, birds may have been pecking at this and or the predatory wasp that uh, will go after these eggs. And that said, uh, these, some of these may also be from last winter. So it's hard to tell whether these are uh, viable or not, but we have to assume the worst. Jumping around here a bit, but I just want to uh, kind of bring us up to date and maybe allay your fears a little bit. The reason this outbreak has been so bad is largely because of drought. If we don't have adequate moisture and humidity, in late April, early May, when these are planning on hatching, then the fungus, which is here now, and that can manage this insect, it makes the caterpillars sick, they stop feeding, they die, they shrivel up. You saw this later in the season last year when it finally did start to rain. But in each of the last two springs, we did not see rain when we needed it. So right now, I'm, I'm very happy for this late season snow. It's not gonna fix the problem, but maybe we're gonna have some more moisture when we really need it in about a month and a half, okay? So that's the trick here, that's, that's the key. If you have the energy to walk around and scrape these off, great. Scrape them into a bowl of soapy water, Kicking them on the ground is, is not going to do the trick. They could still be viable. Each of these egg masses has between 500 and 1,000 eggs in it. Now, I want to be very clear here. The conventional wisdom was for years that those eggs were not laid higher up into the crown. That is not true. I don't know if it used to be true that they stayed down low, but it is not true now. We've been climbing these trees for two years now and have seen plenty of egg masses up there. My point is, you're kind of spitting in the ocean if you're scraping off these egg masses. Also, there's nothing that stops them from shooting out those aforementioned silks and ballooning across your landscape into the crown of your favorite tree even after you've scraped off all of these egg masses. Maybe you have a smaller tree, like an apple tree or a birch tree. Those are, by the way, among its favorite host species. You'll see the egg masses on just about any surface, okay? But their favorite plants to eat are going to be the oaks, 
the birches, the willows, and the apples. I've, I've seen many other species getting munched and depending on where you are, depending what the populations are like, depending on how intense this infestation is, right? And all these little microclimates are factors. You may see your favorite other species get munched as well. I, I had some clients with uh, some sugar maples and those were hit very hard last year. Not what not we necessarily would have expected, but that's what they had over there and they had a lot of hungry spongy moth caterpillars. So yes, feel free to scrape these off, but don't be surprised if these caterpillars move around when they just hatch and they're tiny little things and they shoot out these silk strands, catch the wind and float across the landscape till they can find something that they wanna eat and they'll crawl up. The other thing that a lot of people do is they put bands around the trunks of their trees. Also fine, we've been doing that. We did it when I was a kid, when this big last outbreak happened in the late 70s, early 80s. But again, that doesn't address either the eggs that are up top already and going to hatch or the ballooning factor. So they'll fly over from neighboring trees and bypass your sticky band. There's a lot of different things that you can do. And every time you scrape one of these off, that's 500 to 1,000 less caterpillars that are going to munch your tree. Great. Awesome. Do it but that's not all there is to it, unfortunately. What we really need is, we really need that rain, late April, early May, when it counts. We do have some other tools in our kit. We have some pretty tame sprays and injections that can help treat these. You may have heard of uh, Bacillus thuringiensis, now BTK, the Kirstaki, um, a version, if you will, of uh, the bacterium, which can be sprayed and is very effective with Lepidoptera. Now, Lepidoptera includes all moths and butterflies. So it's a tricky call there, right? If you have a big, beautiful oak tree, you may not be able to spray a tree that size anyway. And you're going to have to consider the idea of killing other very beneficial insects in the interest of maintaining that tree in the long run. It's, it's, it's a tough call, but maybe not. If you're going into your third year of defoliation, better to consider having that tree alive in the long run for your beneficial moths and butterflies, rather than to lose it to one more season of defoliation at the hands of the spongy moth. Hope that makes sense. Um, there are some sprays, there are some injections. Uh, please educate yourself. Please consider the toxicity of these things. Please consider the non-target insects when you are using any kind of pesticide or hiring a professional to do that. Um, I'm happy to talk more about that. We're gonna be super, super busy. And I'm going to try to keep going with these videos to keep the rest of you informed about what I'm seeing. I welcome your input, I welcome your feedback. There are many, many, as I said, many different microclimates, lots of different little experiences here. The elevation of your uh, land plays a role in this. And the first time we saw this in, in 21, um, the, the, there were bands at a certain elevation of the landscape where you could see the defoliation. And then that spread out last year, moved from town to town. Some people are reporting to me that they see very few egg masses now compared to last year. That's great. Meanwhile, I'm getting calls from other people that are absolutely freaked out because they're seeing so many, okay? There's a lot of different experiences that are going to be had within a very small area. Uh, I don't know. The, 30 to 50 mile radius of where I am in southwestern uh, Massachusetts. Okay, I hope that helps. Um, please don't panic. Do what you can. Educate yourselves. Um, share information. And please know that there are some options. And the most important thing is to, is to keep your trees healthy um, the, whenever something gets really stressed. That's going to make it much more susceptible and likely to decline as a result, in this case, of defoliation. So your landscape trees should be mulched, uh, maybe even water them, subs subsequent watering if needed, especially in times of drought, and do whatever you can to, uh, 
to try to, to minimize the impact of this pest. But a lot of it rests on rain when we need it. We've got to have that, that in, in, in introduced uh, fungus, Entomophaga mimaga, we've got to have that happy so that it can infect these caterpillars. There's also the NPV virus, uh, which can be very helpful when that, when that comes on later if the conditions are right. Hope that's helpful. A lot of information in a short time. Just blurting it out there. I will stay in touch. You too. Thanks for watching.